Um, Okay, good evening, Mr. Olua and every other person that is here in the class. Um, if you can hear me, I would love to just, you to just write a little comment that you can hear. Yeah, I can hear you, Paul. I can hear you, sir. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So, good evening once again. I can hear you, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. So, Sorry for it was due to the technical issue anyway. Um, today we'll be looking at um, another new topic entirely, and which is IS8, accounting policy, changes in accounting estimates and errors. Um, I'm so sure that um, we, we concluded the incomplete record yesterday, and I haven't seen a question so far, which made me believe that probably you understand and you keep on going. But if you still have questions on our previous classes, please do not hesitate to drop it in our um, WhatsApp group, or if you have any of our email, you can drop it there, or you can probably chat any of our lecturer. Um, I assure you that you get your swift response. And I'm sure you know the classes already, so we don't have to waste too much time on the classes on as long as the online lecture is concerned. So let's go straight to um, the deed of today. So we are having IS8, account policy changes in accounting estimates and errors. So basically there are several standards. International IS simply means international accounting standards. So these are the um, rules, they are like laws that guide the accounting principles. So in general, so what we do here in Nigeria could align with what they are doing there in British and every other countries. That is what IES is all actually about. And there are several rules like IES 1, IES 2, and so on so and so forth. But today we'll be looking at IES 8 in one of those rules, accounting policies, changes in accounting, estimates, and errors. But then what does this accounting actually deals with it's actually look at a certain circumstances and transactions which require different treatments to the normal profit or loss items basically it is actually applying accounting policies changes in accounting estimates to reflect corrections of prior period errors then what are we literally saying it's saying that the core standard is actually giving a room or condition for an event or providing guidance on developing accounting policies for other items that results in relevant and reliable information. Well, at the end of today's class, what is the objective? The objective is just to enhance um, comparability of entities' financial statements to previous period and to the financial statement of other entities. So let's look at the definition of accounting policies, changes in accounting estimates and errors, and we move from there. So basically, accounting policy as specific principle, basis, conventions, rules, and practice applied by an entity in preparing and presenting the financial statements. So these are just principles, the, the rules, the guidelines, and the practice that you applied in your business, in your entity, while, prepare, while preparing and presenting your financial statements. A changes in accounting estimate is an adjustment of the carrying amount of an asset or liability or related expense resulting for reassessing the expected future benefits and obligation associated with that business or liability. So these are prior issues, like previous issues that we are expecting in the future, like 
present issue, uh, present circumstances that we have already forecast that this will happen in the future. So probably you are about to, um, you realize that maybe um, you are going to sell, uh, you are going to be hoeing a, a person, for example, your rent, you already futurize that you are going to be hoeing rent, your rent will be due by this time next year. Then you are already reassessing, you are already actually planning towards such an expense. You are already providing such an expense, but then circumstances may actually warrant that we actually now make you to go back to what is happening presently. But as time goes on, we will actually explain what more on that accounting estimate. But then there are some key notes that we need to look at while discussing accounting estimates and um, accounting policy. For example, materiality. Omission or misstatement of an asset is material if they could, by their size or nature, individually or collectively influence the economic decision of user taking on the basis of financial statements. Okay, for example, this period that we are, we are in this COVID period actually, and um, so many companies are actually doing their uh, maybe 2019 audit in the first place. And, but then they will look at it that, okay, what is actually happening? Is this COVID actually going to affect the present business status? Is it going to affect what is actually happening? Because they really didn't see that coming in probably in 2019. And by, by the time they are doing their 2019 audit in 2020, um, you know, one of the uh, opinion of the auditor is that um, this complaint is going to be a green concern and there is no issue. It will run down, it will not go bankrupt, it will not liquidate in any time soon. But due to the issue of COVID that now has happened, what is the assurance that the same company will actually not go down soon? For example, you are doing, um, you are making your report in 2019, and you have already said that, okay, well, the profit that we make for 2019 can actually sustain us for 2020. But then you realize that, okay, Nera has actually depreciated and dollar has actually increased, and you realize that you are even spending more on your cost of goods, on your expense, and you are going to be making less profits. Then COVID actually enter. How are you going to survive? Or basically, probably during the 2019 audit, or you are preparing your financial statement, you omit or you miss actually one of a materialistic element in your reports. Probably you are actually owing somebody like about 40% of amount that make up your profit in the first place. So this will actually make us to actually go back to the previous year, to the previous um, reports, to adjust for those mistakes, to adjust for those unforeseen circumstances, to adjust for those economic decisions. So prior period errors, for example, are omissions from and misstatements in. So omissions from when you omit from your statements or you actually miss um, misstatement simply means that you, you actually classify a, a wrong set of class of accounts into another account. Probably you mistakenly went to go and take an asset and you recognize, um, you recognize an expense as an asset, which is now showing false representation of the old financial statement. An entity financial statement for one or more prior period arising from a failure to use or misuse of reliable information. That one was available when information financial statements for those periods were authorized. Also could reasonably be expected to have to have been obtained and taken into account in preparing those statements. Now, what this is actually telling us is that this situation must have actually happened when we are preparing our financial statements, but then probably oversight or we mistakenly actually omitted it. 
So we could not actually put it in our, um, in our financial statement. But as time goes on during our reporting, financial state, reporting state period, then we realize that, okay, we need to actually put this back because it's actually material. It's actually a figure that can change the whole decision you are making in a financial statement. Also, could reasonably be expected to have been obtained and taken into account in preparing those financial statements. So this is also like, we actually forget about to record it or we didn't put it then. One of the classification we need to realize that, should this actually be there? Can we still put it or can we just forget about it and put it in, 20, uh, in the current year? So if it is actually reasonably be expected that it should be in the prior period year, then we can actually put it there. So these are the conditions and I'm sure that if you look at some um, certain example, we will, we will get straight to the points. However, such error results from mathematical mistakes a mistake applying to accounting policy oversight or misinterpretation of facts and fraud. Retrospective application is applying a new accounting policy to transactions, other events and condition as if the policy has always been applied. Yesterday in our incomplete, was it incomplete records? Sorry, but, um, when I was talking about goodwill, if you could remember, we were talking about um, when the value of the business is more than the value of the net assets. Is the difference is actually goodwill. Now, if you could remember that um, in our um, last class that we were talking about fair value and book value. And I said the book value is where you actually historical amount of the assets minus the depreciation is what they call the book value without revaluing it. And where the fair value is, the uh, market price, the economy price, the amount they are selling it in the market. So for example, you have an asset and you've actually prepared your assets according to book value in 2019. We've been doing that in 2018 from 2017. But then you now realize that the worth of this asset in the market is more than the worth you are even carrying in your book. Then you want to change the way you are valuing your assets, for example, and you want to change it to fair value, uh, fair valuation method, whereby the amount in the market, the economy market is what you want to be valuing your assets. Then you can't actually, because accounting is just all about comparability. So because you want to compare your performance in 2020 to your performance in 2019, meanwhile, you have actually prepared your 2019 in book value in the first place. What I mean by book value once again is that you deduct your depreciation straight from your, uh, what do they call it, from your assets. Then the difference will give you the net book value. And you went to the market, for example, and uh, let's use uh, your iPhone as an example or whatsoever that gets you are using, uh, your laptop, for example. You bought your laptop 100,000 and you want to be depreciating it every month, for example. Then you decide to be depreciating it for every 5,000 every month. For us at the end of the first month, then the worth of your laptop becomes 95,000 after removing 5,000. That is the book value. At the end of the second month, it becomes 90,000. But then you now go to the market as at the end of your second month, and you realize that the amount they are selling your laptop is actually 95,000 and it's not 90,000 Because we are actually doing comparability, you are comparing the current period versus the previous period. Then you have to go back to the previous period and also know the what, the amount they were selling it as at the previous period to change that your initial 95,000 naira that you, um, you got at the end of the first month to change it back to the market period. Because even as at your first month, when your own book value was showing 95,000 naira, the worth of your um, laptop, the market could be telling you that it is 85,000 naira. 
but probably because dollar now increases in the following months and the yeah, Naira depreciates, everything is now expensive and your um, laptop now becomes 95,000 Naira in the second month. So you have to go back and the method of going back is now called retrospective application. Once you have in calculation, I'm so sure that you still understand all this very well and it will make sense of it. Selection of an accounting policies. Selection of accounting policy covers um, item of in the financial statements, the accounting policy or policy applied to that item must be determined by applying the standard or interpretation and any relevant implementation guidance issue. Selection of accounting policies. Relevant, relevant to the decision needs of users, reliable in, in that of the financial statement, represents faithfully the results and the financial position of the entity, reflects the economic substance of the transaction and other events and neutral, prudent, a complete, and all material respects. So basically, when you are looking at your accounting policies, you have to look at the relevance and area covered by the IFRS. Anyways, let's go to the changes in accounting policies itself. Changes in accounting policies are applied retrospectively. Like I said earlier on, like you are initially using a book value to value your assets. But then you now look at it that, okay, the state of this is actually not encouraging. You rather want to use the fair value method. So the process of using a fair value method simply means that you go back into it and you, the process of using fair value method simply means that you go to the previous year that you've already been using um, book value, you go back to the previous year and use your fair value method. So by the time people look at the previous year, they realize that, oh, this person have actually been using fair value method. And it will look as if this is what this person has been using. So you should understand the um, app, uh, application to use when you see a situation like account changes in accounting policy. Once you know that there's a change in accounting policy, you know that whatsoever question is coming up is going to be affecting the previous years before it even comes to affect um, the present year. For example, a change in accounting policy by an entity is permitted only if by statute. Second, the change is required by the standard or interpretation or the change results in a financial statement providing reliable or more relevant information. So once the change results in the financial statements, probably you now get to realize that, oh, this is the reason why this should be an expensive expenses instead of an asset. This is the reason why this should be a liability instead of um, whatsoever thing it could be again, instead of purchases, you know, those things. Once you get another reliable information towards it, then this can actually affect your um, financial statements retrospectively. However, a new or revised standard usually include a specific transitional provision to explain how the changes is required in the rules. The standard highlights two types of events which do not constitute changes in accounting policies. So there are events that does not constitute changes in the accounting policy. One, adopting an accounting policy for a new type of transaction or event not dealt with previously by the entity. What this is actually saying is that, for example, you have your laptop, you've been using um, book value to value it, like, that is the cost minus depreciation. You now have your uh, phone with you and you want to depreciate your phone. So the fact that you now want to start using um, fair value to depreciate, uh, to value your phone does not actually mean that you have to go back to the previous year 
to start changing it because if if you also look at it you really don't even have pvoc in your phone in the first place because you just started the transaction or valuing the new asset of your phone so when the transaction is actually new and you actually want to adopt a new policy into it despite the fact that the classes of assets and the classes of um, a such item is the same thing but it's actually a new type of transaction and you now want to adapt a new policy into it it does not require you to go back to the previous entity to previous period to go and change it also looking at it adopting a new accounting policy for a transaction or event which has not occurred in the past like i said or which was not material so if this does not occur in the past yes it's new if it is currently happening this is the first time and if you are actually applying the same rules then it does not affect anything previously so it's like it's like saying um you have a cloth that you've been wearing before and you decide to wash it then you now buy another cloth by the time you buy another cloth you now decide that do you want to wash it before you even wear it when it is not second hand so it has because it is actually new what you apply to the previous cloth because you have actually wore it and washed it does not mean that you will wash this so you are applying a new policy into it so it does it won't really have to go back to affect other previous period determining when there is a changes in accounting policy so how do you know when there is actually a changes in accounting policy recognition for example capitalizing or writing of a certain type of an expenditure so for example like i said an expense you mistakenly went to go and actually capitalize it you once you are capitalizing something means that you are recognizing it as an asset a fixed asset in fact in that way so the implication of this is that once you refuse to recognize something as your expense the, your profits will increase and once your profit increase you are actually telling the people that are looking at your financial statement that you are making more profits and if your profit is actually increasing and you are now capitalizing what you are supposed to expense simply means that you are also telling us that you have more asset at hand so when you are now saying that you have more asset at hand it's simply meaning that okay you are making more profit and you are also having more asset at the same time you see that this is actually not showing the true picture of your business because in the real sense once you turn your what you have actually turned to assets into your expense your assets will actually reduce and your profits will also reduce also measurement for example measuring non correct assets at cost or valuation so like i've been giving you several examples about this book value and fair value um, fair value valuation so you are measuring you are measuring something in uh, at cost in the first place then you decide that you want to change to economic value of an asset then it will require accounting policy it's a change in accounting policy and wherever whenever a change in accounting policy actually applies it means that it has been it, this transaction is not new it has been happening even in the previous years then we actually treat it retrospectively like going back to the previous year as if it has not happened at all also presentation for example classification of cost as cost of sales or administrative expense yes your presentation also you know there is actually a difference between your net profits and your gross profits your gross profit is like um your sales minus your direct cost your cost of sales your purchases things that lead directly when you are actually uh, making sales that actually has effect into your sales so imagine those things that you bought 
those wages that you pay, those people that help you to carry your load, carry jingles and everybody, you are not classifying them as salary or admin expense. So it simply means that you're actually reducing the amount of purchases you buy and you're actually increasing your gross profit because by the time you now reduce your purchases, the amount of sales minus your purchases, which gives you your uh, gross profit, will increase. And once things increase, yeah, what are you trying, the information you are trying to pass to us is that you are purchasing at less cost and you are making more sales. And you are selling higher and you are making more gross profits. So that is the wrong information you are trying to pass across. So such changes in policy must also be done retrospectively. If at least one of these criteria is change, then this is a change in accounting policy. Illustration. Okay. Determine when there is um, a change in accounting policy. IS-23 requires the capitalization of borrowing costs directly attributable to acquisition. Construction or production of a qualifying asset. Previously, IAS 23 allowed companies to expense or capitalize borrowing costs. The revision of IAS 23 led to a change in accounting policy for some companies as it affects one, recognition, the interest cost previously recognized as an expense had to be recognized as an asset. Presentation, the interest costs previously presented in the statement of comprehensive income had to be presented in the statement of financial position. So what does this actually mean is that, you know, um, I'm not sure if you are familiar with IS-23, so this illustration might actually be a very deep for you to actually recognize. So what this is actually telling us is that interest that we, we incur while borrowing, directly to while borrowing, probably um, the, the cost we incur while borrowing a particular amount or a construction for construction or acquisition of uh, a qualifying asset, that this interest initially should be an expense. Basically, interest is an example of an expense in the first place. So they are now saying that, but in, as long as borrowing cost is concerned, this interest is also an expense. So this is what we have been doing up to 2019. And for example, in 2020, the international standard policy people now came and said that, okay, this interest, because even if you are actually borrowing, we will not be incurring this expense if you are not borrowing in the first place. So they now said this interest should actually be capitalized. So what you have actually been putting as your expense should now be recognized as your asset. So that is what is actually trying to tell us. And if you want to change those classification of accounts, then it will affect your previous year um, financial statement. Just know that anything that is affecting the classification of a, uh, account in the first place is an accounting policy, is a change in accounting policy. So let's look at another so IES 8 specified that application of new accounting policy or transaction, new accounting policy to transaction or event that did not occur previously or differ in substance from those that occurred previously is not a change in accounting policy. I've earlier explained this part that once a transaction is new, it does not happen previously in the previous year, you did not see it. Just forget that a change of accounting policy. What is the change of the first place when something is new? That is what should actually come into your mind that there's actually no change when a transaction is actually new. So retrospective application for 
change in accounting policy. When a change, when a change in accounting policy is required, then there is no transitional provision relating to the introduction of the new accounting standard. The change in policy should be applied retrospectively. Excuse me. This is also what you have been saying that when there's a uh, saying that when there's actually a change in accounting policy, we go back to um, retrospective um, previous year accounting to adjust, then we come back to the new year. The reason why we have to go back to adjust the previous year is because if we now look at it, that you want to adjust your previous year, a lot of things will actually change from your previous year. And the major thing that will actually change is from your profit in the first place. Your assets will likely to change. Your equity, your capital, finance by will also change. Then it will now show the true picture of your previous year transaction before you now come back to the current year to adjust. And by the time you adjust, then you can now compare your performance. Was 2020 good? Was 2019 better? Or which is okay, then you look at it. But then what is this retrospective application we we'll even be talking about uh, all these things since we started this lecture? Retrospective application is applying a new accounting policy to a transaction. Other events and conditions as if the policy has always been applied. So when something is new and is actually a change in accounting policy, so for example, you know, if you are preparing your financial statements, basically you compare the current year versus the previous year. And if you want to, if you want to compare it with the previous year, then you can't be comparing apple and mango together. You need to be comparing mango and mango together. So what you are comparing is actually similar. So you can't be comparing a goalkeeper versus a striker. Who is better? No. So that is why we need to go back to 2019 to adjust the account to ensure that it look at what we are about to prepare in 2020, so that we will compare it together. And by the time a new person is even looking at it, this person will not even know that we have actually, we just recently applied this new policy. It will always look as if we've applied it before and it has always been there. That is what a retrospective application is. So an illustration for this is that a company presents a comparative for previous year only. During the year ended 31st December 2015, it changes in accounting policy and the, these changes must be applied retrospectively. If there were no changes in accounting policy, the company would present statement of financial position as at 31st December 2015 and 31st December 2014 only. However, because there is a changes in accounting policy, the company must also present a statement of financial position for first January 20, that is the previous year. That is the beginning of the earliest comparative figure. So what this is actually literally telling us is that instead of us just showing the summary of the financial position of 2014 and 2015 as a December year ending. No, it won't because it needs to also see the beginning of the period that we are actually also comparing. Because by the time we are even, we want to compare, uh, show our financial statement for 2015, we are showing from January 1st to that, um, December 31st. Um, but if you are, we want to compare without an accounting policy, is what we are always comparing is our December as at year end financial statement and December year end um, previous year. But since we now have an accounting changes in accounting policy, then we can now, we can't just use the end of the year for comparative alone, because we also need to compare the beginning of 2014. So that is when we can now say that, okay, this has now been adjusted. The changes in accounting policy has been adjusted retrospectively. But then there are also some limitation to um, this retrospectively application. It might be 
in practicable to retrospectively apply an accounting policy. This could be because the necessary to perform accounting uh, application of the policy is to earlier is not available because it has not been collected then. Um, so what is the meaning of when something is actually not impractic impracticable? So when something is not impracticable, it means that you're applying the requirement of, applying the requirements is impracticable when the entity cannot apply it after making every reasonable effort to do so. For a particular prior period, it is impracticable to apply a change in accounting policy retrospectively or make a retrospective the statement to correct an error if one the effect of the retrospective application or retrospective restatements are not determinable so what is this telling us is that even with the fact that you are willing to go back to your previous period to actually adjust the um the precise um accounting transaction that requires um adjustment you have actually make an effort to look at how you can adjust it and you see that you, there's no way you can actually restate this account there's no way you can actually um, um adjust it so that is actually a limitation to a retrospective application also another one for retrospective application is that the application or retrospective statement require assumption about the management intent would have been in that period. So there are some times that the management actually wants an assumption of this, but then because there's no information as that regards, we cannot provide a, 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 a full details to that assumption. So retrospective statement requires assumption about what management intent would have been in that period so there could have been a reason why a particular a transaction was posted this way in the first place but because they are forgotten and even management can't even remember why it was posted this way then there is actually a limitation to a retrospective application another method is that it requires a significant estimate of an amount and it is impossible to distinguish objectively information about those estimates. One, provide evidence circumstances that, ex that existed on the date as at which those amounts are to be recognized. So, um, you actually have a transaction you omitted, but then your mind was telling you that this transaction was actually in last year transaction. But then there's actually no information to disclose or to tell you that this information was last year transaction. So it will be very difficult for people to believe that this information you are about to pass that will require a major change in your accounting statement, in your financial statement, is actually valid. Except this evidence exists, then it is fine. But if it does not exist, then there is no reason why this information should actually be adjusted in the first place because they will actually need an evidence for such circumstances. Let's look at a prospective application. A prospective application of a change in accounting policy and of recognizing, in change in accounting policy and of recognizing the effect of a change in accounting estimates respectively are one, applying a new accounting policy to a transaction. Now, remember that I said that if there is a, a, a transaction is new, that it cannot be applied retrospectively, but then it can be a prospective application. That is a going forward application. Okay, going forward is how we want to be valuing our a phone assets. Going forward, this is how we want to be following this transaction. But assuming this same transaction has been in existence before, then you can't apply a prospective 
application as long as there is a change in accounting policy. Also recognizing the effect of the changes in accounting estimates in the current and future period of affected by the year. Then what is accounting estimates? If there is a changes in accounting estimates, then is it actually should be applied retrospectively? No. You can't actually apply it retrospectively. It can actually be done going forward. Now let's look at an example. An estimate is therefore based to some extent on management judgment. Management estimates might be required, might be required, for example, bad debts, inventory obsolescence, the fair value of an asset, uh, the fair value of financial assets or liability, the useful life of a non-current asset, the most appropriate depreciation pattern to use, measurement of warranty provision. But look at it, bad debt. For example, in previous year, you have a bad debt of 500,000. Then you now realize that your previous year per bad debt of 500,000 that you calculated in this year is actually not 500,000, but it should be like 300,000. Will you now, because of that, go back to previous year to adjust it? No. So because it is still the same policy you are applying, this does not actually change. What actually changes the estimate of it? And if an estimate actually change and the law actually the, does not change, the principle backing it does not change, then you actually only have to adjust it going forward. It would affect previous year. The same thing also happens to your inventory. Your inventory shouldn't be affecting your previous year. It should just be adjusted going forward. The same thing also applies to if you are using fair value. Remember, I was actually making an illustration between the cost, the book value, and your fair value. But look at this illustration now that said it applied for prospective application. It only says that the fair value of financial assets or liability. So it does not even bring cognizance, the book value or other stuff. So the only thing you are looking at here is that the accounting policy in this place remains intact. The only thing that is changing is the value, the amount, the estimate we actually previously recognized that has now actually maybe adjusted in one way or the other. Okay, so now look at it. The rules here is that Effect of a change in accounting estimate should be included in determination of your net profit or loss of the period of the change. If the change affects that period only, the period of the change and the future period, if the change affects both, it's like it's that straightforward. So let's look at the difference between um, the accounting policy itself and estimates. How do you actually recognize um, accounting policy and estimate? Because we're looking at it too, they are somewhat similar Why you see them in the question, but there's always a, a niche behind it that you, you can differentiate between um, policies and estimates. So it says that it is important to distinguish between accounting policy and accounting estimates. Sometimes it is difficult, like I said earlier, but in such case, let's look at illustration. Accounting policy, depreciating plants and equipment over its useful life. Accounting estimates, how to apply the policy. For example, whether to use straight line method of depreciation or reducing balance of um, is a choice of an accounting policy, uh, accounting estimates. So this is telling us that accounting policy is that, do you want to be distributing, uh, depreciating plants 
and machinery, uh, plants and equipment. But accounting estimates is now telling you that what method do you want to um, actually depreciate? Okay, let's look at an example. You have a laptop. You were using straight line to depreciate it from 2018, 2019. So 2020, you now want to use the reducing balance method to depreciate it. This is an accounting estimate. It won't affect the previous year. But initially, you've been using, um, what do they call it? You've been using fair value, market value, to value your asset from 2018 and 2019. And this year, you now decide that you want to start using depreciation method to value your uh, assets, that is your net book value method. Then you have to go back because you have actually changed the policy of the accounting itself, the policy of the transaction, guiding the transaction. You've actually changed it. And you actually have to go back retrospectively to adjust it. IS 16 says that property plant and equipment allows the use of cost model or valuation model for measurement after for measurement after recognition this is a choice of accounting policy so it is either you choose valuation model or cost model the evaluation model is the economy one the amount that's selling it in the market that i was trying to explain the cost model is the book value that is your cost minus your depreciation is the cost model so after you've decided that you have taken cost model and you now want to switch back to evaluation model, then it should be done. This is a, 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 a cost for a change in accounting policy. But because you want to switch from a straight line deposition, now the policy still intact. It is also a cost model. It is depreciation you are changing. Uh, it is the method in the depreciation you are changing, not the model itself. So you just need to understand that which is accounting policy and which is accounting statements, uh, accounting estimates. Changing accounting estimates also is an adjustment of the current amount of an asset or liability, or the amount of the periodic consumption of an asset that results from the assessment of the present status of expected future benefit or obliga obligations associated with assets and liabilities. Changes are an accounting estimate results from new information or new development and accordingly are not correction of errors. Change in estimate is not the result of discovering an error in a way or in, a, in the way an item has been accounted for in the past, and it is not a correction of an error, unlike your change in accounting policy. Change in accounting estimate is just, you decide that, okay, you just found a new way of doing things, let's continue doing this thing this way, and let's find a new development in, in it. It's not as if you want to correct an error, or you see an error. So let's, uh, let's look at, a typical information and example of uh, changing um, accounting estimates. A non-current asset, seven seconds, please. Okay. A non-current asset was purchased for 200,000 two years ago when it is expected when it's expected the economic life was 10 years, it's, it's, expect, it's expected residual value was new. The assets is being depreciated by straight line method. Now, one is that the model they are using for this asset is a cost model. That is the cost, the historical cost minus the depreciation. That is what they are using. But now the estimates that they are using to calculate this model the method they are using is a straight line method. Method of depreciation are many. We have the sum of the year digit. We have the reducing balance method. We have the depreciation, um, the straight line method. And these people opt for the straight line method. 
a review of non-current assets at the end of the year two revealed that due to technological changes, the useful life of an, the asset is only six years in total. And the asset, therefore, has a remaining useful life of four years. Then the original depreciation charge was 20,000 naira per year. Remember, the 200,000 worth of assets was supposed to use two years. Um, sorry, a non current asset was purchased 200 naira two years ago and was expected to use 10 years, which means that after the two years and 10 years. Also means that 10 years divided by 200,000 you give us 10,000, um, 20,000 naira. So after the two years, we have removed how much? We have removed 20,000 naira. So at the beginning of year two already, we have already removed 20,000 naira from the 200,000 naira. And saying that, and at the end of year two, we now realize that due to technological issue, that the asset that was supposed to last for 10 years, we actually last for six years. In other words, we've already used two years. Instead of it should last us for the remaining eight years, then it's going to last us for four years. Because the expectation was 10 years before, we've used two years, then it should be remaining eight years. But then at the end of the year two, we realized that this will only last for six years. And we've already used two years. And the difference is four years. But then how much is the depreciation we've actually removed? At the beginning of year two, the current amount was 180,000 naira. That is, we've already removed the 20,000 naira from year one. The change in accounting occurs in year two. Remember, it was year two we decided that this thing will last for how many years now? Six years. So does it now say that we will now go back to previous year, prior year to go and adjust this? No. We'll just move on going forward from there and adjust our amount. That okay, how many years do we now have left? After six, we've actually recognized one year of the deposition, which is 20,000 years. How much do we have left? Then let's divided by the number of years we have left, which is five. So that's how they got the annual change of the position for year two, the current year. And for the future year three to six, we change from two, 20,000 to 36,000. That is 180. The 180 we deducted from year one divided by five, because within year has already gone, we can't do that any longer, then minus the six years that is currently making to 36,000 naira. So, that is for accounting estimates. Remember, any decision that deals with accounting policies must be done Previous to uh, retrospectively, any information that deals with accounting estimates must be done prospectively. Like going forward, it should be done. Now, let's look at errors. Power period errors must be corrected retrospectively. So, basically, you need to know how to identify when a transaction is accounting, a change in accounting policy or change in um, accounting estimate or it's an error. So if it is an error and it affected the previous year, then you have to go back to the previous year to go and adjust it now. If it is a change in accounting policy, you have no choice. You will go to the previous year to adjust it and if it is also um, a change in accounting estimate, then it doesn't concern the previous year. We just move it going forward. So it is now left for us to know the transaction of which is which, which is which. So let's look at this. 
Power period errors are omission from a misstatement in the entity financial statement for one or more power periods arising from a failure to use or misuse of a reliable information. We've spoke about this before. So such error includes the effect of mathematical mistakes, yes, probably during your addition or when you are writing your figures or when you are recognizing the transaction value. Mistakes in applying accounting policies, yes, probably what you are supposed to be recognizing as a, an asset you are expensing is what you are supposed to be recognizing as a liability. Um, very sorry for that. I think um, my network just misbehaved. Uh, I'm very really sorry for that anyway. So, correction of prior period um, errors. All material prior period errors should be corrected retrospectively, like we have said, in the first set of financial statements following the discovery of the error. We revised require IS1 revised revised requires that where a prior period error is corrected retrospectively, a statement of financial position is provided at the beginning of the earliest comparative period. If the error occurs before the previous year, then the opening balance of the asset, liability, and equity for the previous year should be reinstated and they are corrected amount unless that is impracticable. So what this is actually saying is that if the error actually affects the previous year alone, then we can go ahead to adjust the previous year accounting statement, uh, financial statement. However, if it adjusts, uh, if it affects the previous year to the earliest comparative figure itself, then we have to adjust the opening figure of the earliest comparative figure. What does that mean by earliest comparative um, figure? Is that, um, for example, like I said, accounting is based on comparative itself. Then, if you want to compare your 2020, the earliest year you can actually compare it with is 2019 except you are actually comparing three years margin. Maybe you want to compare 2020, 2020, 19, and 2018. For most accounting financial statements actually compares just two years, which is 2020 and 2019, for example, that you want to compare. And if that be the case that you want to compare and the error actually affects 2018, then this we actually automatically affect the opening balance of your 2019 itself. So that is what this is advising us. 
then we have to adjust our opening balance of the earliest year, except there's no way we can just correct this. We will see some illustration and, okay. Illustration, in preparing its financial statement for December 2014, Company A discovered an error affecting 31st December 2013. 2013. The error should be corrected in the 31st December 2014 financial statement by restating now by restating the comparative figure of December 31st 2013 at their correct amount. If the error had occurred in 2012, like I have said, the comparative opening balance for the beginning of December 2013 should also be restated at their corrected amount. The reported profit for December 31st, 2014 is not affected. So the example cost is if you have deal with, if you have to deal with charge with ch um, changes of accounting policy or error in an account preparation, remember to adjust the balance of retained earnings brought forward. Like I said, basically most of the time when you are actually adjusting retrospectively. The only thing that, the most major thing that it's always affecting is your profit. And if it is your balance sheet, then it's certainly your profit goes to your retained earnings and it's going to be affecting your retained earnings in your um, statement of financial position. Okay, let's look at some exercise and Okay, I think we have a lot of exercise here. Okay, now, for example, let's look at all this exercise. And we want to know if it is um, error, if it is changes in accounting policy, if it is um, um, accounting estimates. Why proofreading financial statements for the year in the 30th December 2018? Lisa, a training accountant, has identified certain changes from last year's financial accounts, financial statement, but she is unsure whether they represent change in accounting policy, a revision, a revision in accounting estimates, or a correction to prior year period. Now let's look at it. Previously, FCA Limited accounted for its non-current assets using the historical cost basis. In the current period, however, FCA has to adopt, adopt evaluation model under IES 16. The account or its to the account or its non-current account. So you have this type of situation. Is it an accounting estimate? Is it an accounting of policy or is it an error? Now, initially they said he has been using historical costs, but then he decided that he wants to change the model to a evaluation model. This is a policy. So once you are changing the policy, it will affect your previous year accounting. So this is, a change in accounting policy. Let's look at B. FCA Limited previously had a policy of calculating depreciation on equipment using straight line method at 10%. However, in the light of significant loss, losses recognized on recent disposal, the management has decided that depreciation equipment by using, dep to depreciate equipment by using the reducing balance method at 20%, which Shall more, which shall more accurately reflect the wear and tear of the equipment. Initially, they were using straight line method, but now they switch to um, reducing balance method. But then you look at it that this is actually 
a method of depreciation. Depreciation is actually under historical cost model. Cost, historical cost model is actually a change in accounting policy. But then you come down. Then if we are actually, are we actually still changing our historical cost model? No, we are not changing it because we are still maintaining our historical cost model. This is the, the way you actually look at it and you think about it. But then we are just changing the method at which we are depreciating. And if you are actually just changing that, then it is the estimate you'll be looking at. This is the estimate that is changing. So what method is this? What change is actually reflecting it? This is a change of accounting policy. Yeah, change of accounting estimates. So it's as easy as that. Let's look at C. FCA Limited has a policy of valuing inventory brought forward in the current period, that is last year current inventory balance, has been changed because it had erroneously been valued using LIFO method last year. So now, this is looking at, looking at this, this is a method of valuation itself. When you look at it, what method are they using? Last year, they were using last in first out. And what actually happened? They said FCA has a policy of value inventory brought forward in the current period. That is, last year closing inventory balance has been changed because it's erroneously been valued using LIFO method last year. So this was actually changed because of um, um, an error in, um, because of the errors you, uh, you are actually using to value at your inventory. This year, you are actually using a particular model, method to use it. But then this now tells you that it has been changed because it's had, even the answer is already there, erroneously been valued using LIFO method. So this is actually an example of error itself. Also, FCA Limited has a past practice of recognizing sales revenue at the time of dispatch of goods to the retailers. In the current period, however, the revenue has not been recognized by the FCA Limited until the goods sold to the retailers have been re until the goods sold to the ret retailers have been resold to the end customer. Management believes that new recognition rules more accurately reflect in the economic substance of the sales and returns arrangements to the retailers. So what is actually the recognizing period in this. So this is actually, they are actually saying that, okay, in the first place, we actually know that we have made sales when we have uh, given our dispatch, when we dispatch our goods to the retailer. But then currently, they are now saying that sales revenue should actually be recognized when it's until the goods sold to retailer has been already been sold to the end customer. So that is an estimate that, okay, this is how you are recognizing your sales initially, and you don't want to be recognizing it this way any longer. We want to be using this method to be recognizing it. So because we want to be recognizing it more accurately, when it has gotten to the final consumer is actually not basically a policy. It's actually basically not an error. It is just a management decision. So it is just a management uh, making uh, a, a, an estimate decision that, okay, this is when we want to be recognizing our sales. So this is an example of a change in accounting estimates. E. In estimating the employee benefit obligation of FC Limited at the previous year end, they actually failed to 
take into account FCA limited plans to discontinue operation in one of its geographical segments. Management had announced its plan three years ago. Recently, we actually finished and revised estimates of FCA limited liability, which we expect the employing benefits of the current period to be taken into account, the plans of discontinuation. The financial statement of the year have been adjusted um, accordingly. So what is the example um, illustration of this? In estimating the employee benefits of obligation of FCA Limited in previous year end, they actually fail to take into account FCA plans to discontinue operation. They forgot to take into uh, their plans recognition. Management had announced its plans three years ago. So this plans has already been in place three years ago. So recently they actually furnished and revised an estimate to FCA Limited liability with respect to employee benefits of current and prior period taken into uh, account, the plans of discontinuation. So this should actually be an example. Um, this should actually be an example of um, an accounting um, estimates. You identify, reduce, and let's look at an um, exercise two. Okay, let's look at an exercise two for this and Allen Construction incurs significant finance costs on its finance for the construction of supermarkets. Its choosing accounting policy dates has been expense has been expense in finance costs as incurred. The final account for the year ended 31st December 2012 and 2013 year after accounts reflected the policy and choose the following. 2013-2012, profit before tax, finance cost, profit before, oh, profit before interest and tax, finance cost, profit before tax, income tax expense, profit after tax, retain earnings. Then, the directors of Allen Construction have now decided that a change in accounting policy in 2013 to capitalize finance costs as per IES 23. This is a, an income statement itself, POL. We have profit before tax, interest and tax. We have finance costs in 2012 in 2013. We have tax, we have profit after tax, and we have our retained earnings. But they now change their policy. And now, if there is a change in policy, then what happens? It affects PVOCA transaction. Island construction incurs a finance cost other than those related to the construction of the supermarket. Martin Construction paid the dividend of four million during the year ended in 2013 show the accounting policy, which reflected the account uh, of income statements. Remember, what is the beginning of income statement in the first place? It's seven, 6,200. It's seven, 6,200. Now, they now said finance costs. Remember, in 2012 and 2013, that was two, five and one, seven, 50. Should not be expense again, but rather, it should be taken as an asset. It should be capitalized. A finance cost should be capitalized due to IS 23. Then what happened? We will put zero, zero, zero. Then our profit before tax changes. Once our profit before tax changes, then we have income tax expense. Then we have income tax expense of 1,400 1, naira. 
then if you notice what is the difference here in our profit after tax the difference is that our profit after tax increases from 3050 naira in 2012 it increased to 4800 naira in 2012 then the same thing also applies in 2013 hence what then happened your opening balance is your uh, changes in equity or your um, statement of financial position will also adjust because we virtually have a new profit for the year for 2012 and 2013. So this will also adjust accordingly. So instead of having 3,050 Naira in 2012 plus your 4,300 uh, in 2013 to make up your retained earnings, for 2, uh, 23,000 and 26,015 naira respectively, it will adjust because we now have a new profit of 4,800 and 6,800 naira. Then what then happened? Return earnings brought forward for 2,300 naira plus your 4,800, we give you 27,800. Remember that it was 3,050 naira plus your 23,000 that make up this figure in the first place from your question. If you add these two together, it will give you 26,050. So the same thing we are just doing. Instead of adding 23,000 naira to this guy here, no, we rather add it to this new profit we've gotten because a change in accounting policy affects previous period. And once it affects period period, we adjust it and makes it look as if the policies has been from 2012, from previous year. So that was the reason why we added 4,800 to 23,000. We have 27,800 plus 6,800. Then the dividend paid. Since you paid dividend, then you subtract it and you have your 33,600. So that is that for changes in accounting policy. So we can also look at exercise theory. If you have any question, yeah, I look at, we have solution to, to exercise theory. You can look at it. If you feel that you should have um, a previous year adjustment that you did not have, or you think that you did not understand this policy, then you can actually let me know. We look at question four. Question four also deals with um, change in accounting policy. Also, question three basically is actually not change in accounting policy. It's actually change in estimates. So it went a fight previous year transaction. Question four is actually a change in accounting policy, and you can look at it. I think the solution is also there. If you think you have question, you can also less. Let's let us know. Or oh, basically, let's look at this question four. Let's look at this exercise four and let's end it there. So during because I noticed that we have um several assignments to that you can work along with, and if you have any question, you can also let us know. So let's look at this question four. During 2000X7, FCA Limited discovered a certain item had been included in inventory. At 31st December 2006, value at 4.2 million, which had in fact been sold before the year end. The following figure for 2006 has reported and 2087 drafts are available. The reason why it is draft is that they are still working on it. It is not the accurate uh, financial statement yet. So that is why they are always putting draft. But 26, 20 X is already accurate, correct, and fine. So sales, we have 47,200, We have cost of goods sold. We have our uh, profit before tax. We have income. We have profit for the year. Then we now have the 10 earnings for 2006 is um, 13 million. The cost, 
excuse me, the cost of goods sold for 2007 includes the 4.2 million euro. Now remember what happens to euro. Once it's an error, we go back to the previous year, if it actually affects the previous year. Includes error of 4.2 million in opening inventory. The income tax rate was 30% for 2006 and 2007. No dividend was declared. Sales. So we have sales, our sales remains intact, but then what happens to our cost of goods? Remember, inventory is also an example, uh, an element of cost of goods. So what comprises of our cost of goods sold is our opening inventory, plus our purchases, plus our carriage inward, plus our return, uh, minus our return outward, minus our closing inventory. That is what makes up our cost of goods sold. So then we have um, our cost of goods sold is re uh, related to 55,834,517 from the question. However, they said that the question says that 4.2 was included in 2017 error in the opening inventory. So this was supposed to be a figure for 2016 that we mistakenly went to go and include in 2017. Then what we happen, we subtract it from 2017 and include it in 2016 figure. So that was the reason why we are subtracting 4,200 because it was erroneously go and put as the opening balance of 2017 instead of in 2016. So we have 51,600 and we have 38,770. So going forward, we have our cost of goods to change. So instead of us having cost of goods of 34,570 and 55,800, then we are having 51,600 and 38,700. 70. Then we can move on again. We have an adjustment for our tax. It says income tax rate was 30% for 2016 and 2017, respectively. Remember that the 4.2 was actually not calculated for. Tax was not removed from it. In fact, the only thing we can say is that tax was removed from 4.2 for 2017. And instead of the tax should have been removed in 2016. The cost of this particular inventory, tax was removed on it. And we need to add it back for 2017 and subtract it from 2016. So we find the 30% of this inventory in 2016. Cost of good suits of opening inventory of 4.2. What is the 30% of 4.2 million? 30% of 4.2 million will give us 1,260,000 naira. So, because we've already removed it initially, because tax is actually a negative figure that we removed. If you look at it, tax is actually a negative figure that we removed. Then we have to add the portion back the 1.4, the 1 1.4, we actually have to add them back. And 1.260, 1,269, we add it back, then subtract that figure from our 2006 profit. Then we have um, a new tax, um, a new tax calculation. 3,400 plus 1,260. We have 4,660 and we have 2,620 naira. So that was how we arrived at 4,660 and 2,620 naira. And we have a new profit for the year. So that is for accounting changes in accounting policy, estimates, and errors. So there are several questions you can also look at 
I'm be, I'll be looking forward for your question. I'm still surprised that I'm still not seeing a question. Is it that I'm guessing you understand what I've been lecturing so far. So going forward, um, I would love you to look at it again, solve so many questions. And yes, it is actually an examinable questions that can come out. Don't joke with it, but make sure that you know some key things. For accounting, for changes in accounting policy, it should be adjusted retrospectively going back to the previous year. Majorly, the things that are always affected is actually your profit for the year for your income statement and your retained earnings for your statement of financial position or changes in equity. The same thing of applies to your error. If there's an error that is affecting the previous year, then it is done retrospectively. Anything error affecting your previous year is done retrospectively. And for accounting, changes in accounting estimates, then it is not done retrospectively, but you do it going forward. So it does not affect the previous year. So your, the skills you need to attain is for you to be able to identify which one is changes in accounting estimates, which one is changes in accounting policy, and which is an error. And I've told you that an accounting policy, change in accounting policy deals with more of a law, the standard itself, a model when you're changing the model. But changes in estimates is just, maybe when you're just changing something that is actually not intangible, just between the management decision that you should adjust this, you should change the particular things and you should start recognizing this in a certain way, which does not relate to the law itself. So if you have any question, feel free to drop it on our WhatsApp group and or you can private chat me. I will be available to answer you at any point in time. And if you don't, we look forward to see you in our next um, class also. So thank you so much.